Medicine X was proud to announce the launch of our International Healthcare Design Awards this year. The program aims to encourage and recognize outstanding accomplishments in patient-centered healthcare design according to our Medicine X values and beliefs. We believe thoughtful design is essential to innovation in healthcare and medicine across all domains, education, research, and clinical care. We believe healthcare design is better when done in partnership with patients. We believe that good design in healthcare involves the participation of the entire healthcare team, empathy for patients and their families, and a deep understanding of the social and local context where health happens. We believe in designing for problems that matter most in healthcare. The defining criteria for the Stanford Medicine X Healthcare Design Awards are excellence, innovation, and potential or proven ability to improve the quality of health through design. The Stanford Medicine X Healthcare Design Awards were created to recognize the outstanding accomplishments of those who share our belief in the value of good design in healthcare. We received an incredible number of high quality nominations from all around the world, and our distinguished jury of design thinking experts spent months narrowing it down to a group that is planning to revolutionize a system that needs change. While the runner-ups will be announced at the closing session, we want to take this opportunity to introduce you to the overall winner of the first annual Stanford Medicine X Healthcare Design Awards. So drum roll, please. <laughs> um, we would like to announce the, an amazing company called Organize, um, the winners of this competition. Organize was extremely strong in every category. In fact, it was so convincing and so compelling that I signed up after reading their entry so they can have all my organs when I don't need them. <laughs> we were given an award for the most meaningful and clever name. They might also win that too, but that's not, a, that's not an award. One thing that was evident through and through was a commitment to human-centered design from the donor to the recipient and all the people and all the ecosystem in between. So I'm, it's an honor to be uh, the one who uh, ha passes off as an introduction. So here to tell you about the group's effort to innovate and transform the organ donation process is co-founder of Organize, Greg Siegel. Good morning. I'm Greg Siegel. I'm the co-founder of Organize. We're a nonprofit trying to rebuild the organ donation system. When I was a little kid, my dad was Superman. Anything. By the time I was in college, he wasn't. It happened very quickly. He was out for a jog one day and he collapsed. And we took him to the emergency room and they said, your dad needs a heart transplant. It was five years and three open heart surgeries before he finally received one. Today is not a story about my dad, though. It's a story about 123,000 other Americans who are still waiting for transplants today. And they're not just waiting, they're dying. 22 of them every single day are dying. It's an important problem, it's also an expensive one. Patients uh, on the waiting list uh, help drive a $47.5 billion dialysis spend our country spends every year. The need for dialysis is supposed to quadruple in the next 15 years. This is a big problem. Why does it exist? Why do we have such a big waiting list for organ transplants? 95% of Americans support organ donation, only 40% have registered. There's a big drop off between people who say that they will and people who actually do. Why is that? The only place we ask them is at the DMV. That's the only place you're asked to be an organ donor. This slide is real. We didn't doctor this. If you Google image DMV, the first search result you get is for hell. <laughs> who, that's, that's real. Who, 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 uh, who decided to put it there? Who thought this would be a good place to ask people to make end of life wishes? We didn't ask that question rhetorically. We asked it very literally and we met these two guys, two really wonderful guys. Blair and Fred Sadler, they just joined our advisory board. 
This picture is in black and white because it's an old picture. This is in 1968. They worked for the National Institute of Health. The NIH asked them for a legal framework for property rights for corpses. It was really to govern scientific research. They were lawyers and they came up with a legal, a, a legal solution to this, the donor card. Uh, you'd sign it and you'd put it in your wallet. It was an entirely secondary consideration is how would you distribute this? They weren't marketing guys, right? So in 1968, where was the only place you could push this donor card out and get into the world was a DMV. It was the only place that you could verify people's identity credibly at, at, at any scale. So they chose a DMV, not because it was perfect, but just because it was possible. So we showed up in their office and we said, guys, it's a new world today. It's 2015. There are new things that are possible. Should we rewrite your law? And they said, no, the law is great. Read the law. In 1968 and still today, the legal definition of a donor registration is, quote, any statement or symbol that reflects a donor's wish. You can sign a cocktail napkin and it's legally valid. A cocktail napkin may be legally valid, but if I got hit by a bus today, there's no technology which searches every cocktail napkin in the world to see if I'd signed it, so it's irrelevant. My next of kin won't know. But what they told us is the law is great. Don't rebuild our law. Build us a better cocktail napkin. And that was a really great reframing of the challenge for us. It was really great reframing for two reasons. One, it was about technology, not about law. And technology moves a lot faster than law. And two, I liked the reframing of it because I knew the answer. If you can write, I want to be an organ donor on a cocktail napkin, why can't you post, I want to be a hashtag organ donor on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter? I want to be a hashtag organ donor. And the hashtag doesn't just make your post cool, it makes it searchable. That's what solves the cocktail napkin problem. So here's how the system works, even before Organize was invented. Uh, every organ donation eligible death is referred to what's called a local organ procurement organization, the OPO. The OPO searches the DMV registry to see if you'd registered, and in either case, they talk to your next of kin about donation. This is live. We're piloting this in Nevada. This is what the system looks like. Our solution is we built a skin for the Nevada OPO that sits on top of their DMV registry. So they search our interface, and they still get the same DMV results. Did this person register or not at the DMV? What we also do is we infuse every social post that person ever made with a public profile on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter using hashtag organ donor or hashtag organ donation or a few other campaign-specific hashtags that, that we use. The OPO sees these posts and they show it to next of kin and they say, these, this is what your loved one wanted. Would you, like to, would you like to honor it? These were your loved one's wishes and would you like to honor them? And that's a really good question. Right, 97% of the time, historically, 97% of the time, next of kin knows your wishes, they'll honor them. And it doesn't matter how you voice them. If you register at the DMV or you told your wife over dinner, if she knows your wishes, 97% of the time she'll honor them. And what's also really great is that if your loved ones know your wishes, they're 30% less likely to suffer from depression or PTSD after they've lost you. This is really powerful. So one of the first slides I showed you was 123,000 people are waiting for transplants. This number is not static. The waiting list has been growing for 20 years. The waiting list keeps growing. What do we do about it? At Organize, we think it's pretty simple. We think it's cheap and easy and scalable, and you guys can start today if you want to start driving the solution. Make hashtag organ donor a trending topic. Right? Let's get the conversation out into the, into the world. Let's get the tools out into the world. And I guarantee it's only a matter of time before one of these 123,000 families, before one, of, before one of their sons, someone who loves their dad as much as I did, as much as I do, uh, starts to write ice bucket challenge for hashtag organ donation. Right? And then we can solve this in a week. Thank you. <laughs>